Today, we will speak to the foremost expert on global warming in the scientific community. He is co-chair of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And Chris Field is the founding director of the Carnegie Institution's Department of Global Ecology, professor of biology and environmental Earth System Science at Stanford University, an expert on everything from energy and carbon and all the questions we may want to have about global warming answered. He's testified in front of Congress. He's been featured on the BBC, uh, U.S. Academy, uh, U.S. National Academy of Sciences. First of all, Professor Field, is there any denying that there is global warming and human-caused global warming? Uh, are we past that? Is it scientifically irrefutable? Where are we? The scientific community is clearly past that. The conclusion from the 2007 Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report was that warming is unequivocal. There's absolutely no doubt that if we've seen substantial global warming in the last 100 years, global average temperatures are now about one degree Fahrenheit higher than they were in 1900. And we also know that it's very likely, that means at least a 90% probability, that most of the warming in the last 50 years is a consequence of human releases of heat-trapping gases to the atmosphere, carbon dioxide and other gases that trap heat radiated from the Earth's surface. And what human activities are causing that? Well, the two big contributors to that are the combustion of fossil fuels, coal, petroleum, and natural gas. That's about 85% of the total, and the other is clearing of forests, which is now mainly in the tropics. That's about 15% of the total. There has been work to ask what's the impact of animal agriculture, the contribution of animal agriculture to the net forcing of climate change. And the most recent study was completed by the Food and Agriculture Organization. They concluded that the contribution of animal agriculture to climate change is approximately the same as the transportation sector, very large. And the way they come up with that number is by trying to figure out how much of the contribution of each of the important greenhouse gases as a result of the activities we do to support animal agriculture. And there are three big contributors to that. One is that the animals themselves release substantial amounts of methane. Methane is a greenhouse gas that on a molecule per molecule basis is about 30 times as powerful as CO2. The way the cow digestive system works, a lot of methane comes out both ends of the cow. The second big contributor is nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is a very powerful greenhouse gas, 300 times as powerful as carbon dioxide on a molecule per molecule basis. And it comes from two parts of the animal agriculture system. It comes from over-fertilization, overuse of nitrogen fertilizers, which are widely applied, especially in corn agriculture, which mostly uses animal feed, and also from the manure management cycle. And the third big contribution to climate change from animal agriculture is deforestation. A very large fraction of the forests that are cut in South America and in Asia are now cut to put in large-scale industrial agriculture that's used primarily for animal feed. In recent years, it seems that I'm hearing more and more uh, people talking about methane than carbon, that looking at methane as part of the solution, of perhaps we can change our behavior and address the methane. I don't really understand how carbon is being addressed. I don't really understand carbon taxing and trading, and it sounds like a Ponzi scheme to me or some hedge fund. I don't understand how, how that would possibly work. Uh, tell us about carbon versus the, the methane and what kind of actions we can take. It's important to understand that there are several important greenhouse gases. About two-thirds of the climate forcing caused by human actions comes from carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is produced from the combustion of hydrocarbon fuel coal, methane, natural gas, or petroleum. Basically, you combine the carbon in those fuels with oxygen in the air, and you get carbon dioxide. Um, methane, or natural gas, is a very important fossil fuel. It can be burned in power plants or in home heating systems. And when methane is burned, the carbon in the methane combines with the oxygen atmosphere to produce CO2. But because methane, which has a chemical formula of one carbon and four hydrogens, burns, it produces water vapor as well as carbon dioxide. Quite a lot of the energy comes from oxidizing, from releasing the chemical energy 
through the formation of the water, which is not an important greenhouse gas in terms of the way the climate finally sees it. So people do talk about using natural gas as a cleaner energy source than carbon dioxide, than coal or petroleum, and it is, but the amount of methane that's available is somewhat limited. The problem with methane comes when it's released to the atmosphere without being burned, and there are several important sources of methane to the atmosphere. Some come from industry leaking natural gas pipelines. Some come from natural processes in the ecosystems. Wetlands release methane, and some come from agriculture. Rice paddies and industrial animal production both produce substantial amounts of methane. So overall, methane contributes about uh, 15% of the total anthropogenic, the total human-caused forcing of climate. And most of the increases are believed to be a consequence of changes in agriculture. That's been a big changer over the last few decades. So many cows, so much demand for meat and dairy. Have I seen statements from the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the United Nations, uh, suggesting reduction of meat, uh, going vegan, going in that direction as a way of addressing climate change, global warming? The mandate of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change is that it should be policy relevant but not policy prescriptive and so it it does not make recommendations about any features of what the fuel mix should look like or what behavior should look like but what it tries to do is explain to people the consequences so that stakeholders and governments and in communities and in families have the information they need to make good decisions and it tries to address this on all different levels all the way from uh, what kinds of tax policies might alter the trajectory of emissions from industrial processes all the way to what kinds of personal choices people make about their diets might have on the atmosphere forcing of climate. So although the IPCC doesn't make recommendations, it certainly highlights the importance of this issue. And so uh, if I were to recommend to people to go vegan to try to uh, benefit the environment, I, I wouldn't be way off base, would I? <laughs> well, as I said, the most recent report, which is one that's it's discussed in the IPCC, but the most recent report is from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, the FAO, and it's the one that characterizes the total contribution of animal agriculture to climate change as about 15% of the total problem, about the same magnitude as transportation. As all transportation combined. Uh, we, we may have another minute or two, but I, I wanted to ask because it always seems like I'm seeing alarm bells that we're passing tipping points. We're reaching stages more quickly with global warming. We expected the polar bears to be drowning in the distant future. We've already reached that, that, that there's more carbon going into the atmosphere than uh, originally estimated. You know, the glaciers are falling into the ocean more rapidly. I think it is true that in the last few years there have been some startling indications of the pace of the climate's changing. It's also important to recognize that the, the IPCC is um, a governmental organization and it's chartered to be very careful in the way it evaluates and so it always gives a range of options and that's based on the scientific uncertainty. What we're seeing is that IPCC characterizes a range of options for things like the, the rate of sea ice loss or the rate of uh, melting of land ice on Greenland and Antarctica or the, the rate of CO2 emissions from industrial activity. And in a startling series of recent discoveries, what we've seen is that the actual observed rates are at the very upper limits of the IPCC range. So we are seeing climate forcing change fast. We're seeing feedbacks from the Earth system occurring very fast, and we're seeing the impacts accumulate very fast. Okay. Uh, we're out of time. I uh, want to thank you for being with us today on Go Vegan with Bob Linden. So long.